the quarterback play has been abysmal. They asked Brady today on the podium, like, what do you see when you're watching the football? And he's like, I just see a lot of bad football. Which yeah, he's is, right. And the football has been really uh, erratic, skittish. We've seen leads blown, but most importantly, just a ton of bad quarterback play. What happened? I thought this was going to be like the decade of the quarterbacks. Why did it go the other way? No, dude. And I think you're spot on. And I, I start going through my reasoning. Okay. Is it because the preseason shorter? Is it because guys aren't playing as much? Is it because there's not a lot of contact in August in these training camps and it's not what it used to be, but a lot of this football, as good as the parody has been, and there's, you know, only one undefeated team remaining. Every team has at least had a tie or a win. Uh, the football has been kind of shitty. And, and I say that as a, as an employee of the NFL, like it's not as crisp as we're used to seeing. And from our stars, you're talking about Brady struggling. You're talking about Rogers struggling. You're talking Stafford. about Stafford. You go right down the list. I mean, we did this exercise off camera, I think, on Good Morning Football. And I'll do it with you. If you go through the NFC, Jalen Hurts has been the best quarterback in the NFC. Who is number two as far as NFC quarterbacks this year, objectively? Who do you think? Like it just is? Pay somebody playing well? Yeah. Who's playing the best football? Not who's got the best career. Like if you're saying who's had the best first four weeks of the season, who would you say it is? I would probably say Rodgers just because I think they've dropped a couple touchdowns from him. Okay. Like if he gets that 75-yard Watson one, if he gets the Dobbs one last week, that's an extra 120 yards and two touchdowns for him, basically. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's been that bad, but yeah, after that, I mean... Goff? I made a, yeah, Goff has been... It's hey. hard to say about like that they've been playing kind of crap teams, but you know, now matter. he's got like, a bunch of injuries. But yeah, you're right. He's putting up stats. How about Geno Smith? Like... If you were to say, how about Cooper Rush? If you were to say in August, like, here are the four best quarterbacks in the NFC a month through the season, which was supposed to be Dak and Stafford and Brady and, you know, all these guys. If you were to say it's Cooper Rush and it's Geno Smith, like, that's why the NFL is amazing. Like, you could laugh at it all you want, but like, those guys are playing the best at the position. And I don't know if Rodgers has played well. I would push back on you and say, I don't think he's played well. I think there's these first halves of these games, like they are so out of sync. And with yeah. the exception of that bears game, like I, don't, I think they got really lucky and you saw the, the image. And I think Bakhtiari tweeted out of like LaFleur with that huge gasp of relief at that final field goal, like to escape that game against Bailey Zappi. I think that's how I feel every Packers game so far that they've won. It's like, gosh, that was a struggle. That was tough. Like aside from the bears game, it just feels like they're getting by, but it, I don't think Rogers has been lights out. I don't think so either, which is why it's funny he, that he's probably been the second best NFC QB. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's almost by default because you wouldn't say Kyler Murray. He's been bad. Bad. Uh, you wouldn't say Brady. Nope. You wouldn't say Stafford or Cousins. It, then you get into the Goff territory. I think going backwards, though, I just wrote down like all the quarterbacks that I think are either bad, <laughs> pretty bad, <laughs> or like a notch below mediocre. And I wanted to see if there were more in the NFC or the AFC. In the NFC, we have Fields, we have Mayfield, we have I mean, Danny Dimes. Can I interrupt on Baker? Baker has objectively been maybe the worst quarterback in football this year. And when I came out before the season, I was like, I think Darnold could still be the starter. I was laughed out of the room. Like, I don't know what people thought they were getting from Baker because last year, as banged up as he was, objectively was not great. He's had some good moments, but yeah, okay. Sorry. So Baker, I, I think... Well, that was... Baker was a misfire by me because I was thinking, well, well, two years ago... Sure. He made round two. Like, it's not like he's never done anything in the league, but I thought that week four perform or the last week performance, whatever week that was. Um, yeah, it was week four. Against the Cardinals. Awful. Sorry, Bronchitis and, Bill is here. Not remember what week it is. Um, he was so bad in that game that I'm actually surprised he's starting this week because if I'm Matt Rule, I am now in job protection mode. And I even if I'm throwing P.J. Walker out there, at least that's not another Baker Mayfield week. Anyway, Fields, Mayfield, Danny Dimes, Wentz, who if he doesn't have blocking, is just a complete train wreck. Yep. Then you kind of move into that Cooper Rush, Mariota, Andy Dalton group yep. where it's like, don't hurt me. Keep you in games. Yeah, you can't get totally hurt. Yeah, like Mariota's been, Mariota been fumbling a lot, which is like so frustrating if you're a Falcons fan because it's like, just just don't hurt us. Like, that's all we're asking. And Dalton last week was more than serviceable. And I think that level of quarterback play, as sad as this is, like don't hurt us might be yeah. superb in the NFC this year. Then you have Goff, 
and Gino, yeah. who same thing, don't hurt us, but also you can have a moment. For a quarter, shit's happening. Whoa, wait yep. a second. Did I evaluate you wrong? And then they'll do something dumb. And then I think finally Jimmy G. Where Jimmy G good? No, I, I think Jimmy G mediocre. Yeah. yeah. I think that's that Jimmy G is the line. And then after that, you have Cousins and Stafford and Murray, none of whom are playing well. But nope. I think the pedigree, you have to put them over all those guys. And then you have uh, Brady and Rodgers and then Hertz, who's playing the best right now. But I listed one, two, three, five, ten. 10 yeah. of the 16 QBs in the NFL in the NFC, mediocre or worse. So you're like, well, the AFC has got to be better. Eh. <laughs> Pickett, Zach Wilson, Davis Mills, the seven inning starter of the NFL. He, oh he throws God. seven, but then the bullpen. They're always winning. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Brissett, who's been, I think, better than people expected, but yeah. he really hurt them last week. He did. Um, pick. Bridgewater, who's good at covering games. I'm not sure you want him taking in the playoffs. <laughs> Mac Jones hurt right now. Matt Ryan, who I think I think time has passed him by, and Tannehill. So that's eight. So we have 18 quarterbacks, I would say, are mediocre or worse. That yeah. is more than half the league. Now, I looked at the QBR from the last few years, right? And QBR, it's a little bit of a flawed stat, but I think it's better than QB rating. So you go like 2021 and 2020, we only had four QBs below 40 QBR. Oh, below like 40 this. is like, I'm bad. Okay. 50 plus QBR. We had 21 in 2021 and 23 in 2020. Even going backwards, 2019, 23, 2018, 23, 2017, 21. So it's always at least two thirds of the league. 60 plus QBR, 12 and 21, and then going backwards, 15, 13, 13, 11. Okay. So like the 12 is like the Mendoza line on that one. Like you're going to get 12. Yeah. Yeah. What do we have Se this year? 70 plus. Three and 21, five and 20, seven and 19, three and 18, 17 and four. Okay. This year. Yeah. We have nine below 40. Wow. The record before that for the last five years was four. So we have doubled the number of bad QBs. Now, smaller sample size. For the 50 plus QBR, again, 21, 23, 23, 23, 21, the last five years. This year, 13. Gosh. Less than half aren't even at 50. Then the 60 plus, we're at 10. Last year was 12. The year before was 15. And then we have seven in the 70 plus, which is high. So basically mm -hmm. we're top heavy and bottom heavy. And then the middle is lower than expected. Now, again, small sample size. And I think sure. you make a good point about the preseason. And, uh, you know, we've had some wide receiver injuries. I'm sure that's not helping. Like, I, you know, Brady, I think would be higher if he had a healthy crew. And we've had some offensive line injuries. But I'll also, I also this look is at like, bad. The way, all right, so like the Giants are three and one, the Falcons are two and two. You know, Mariota's throwing 70 yards a game. Daniel Jones is attempting like to, mm. 10, like both those teams are running the shit out of the ball. I think the Giants go with these three tight ends and it's like, it. I say this almost in a lovingly way. It looks like I'm watching JV football, watching the Giants with three tight ends running, run left, run right, bootleg, play action, go Daniel Jones. And that's what it takes to win because I, you know, Giants have no receivers right now. Giants offensive line is playing well. Like, let's use that as our strength. I, I think these offensive coordinators are kind of throwing out the the aesthetics. And in Arthur Smith's case, I mean, they ran the ball 14 straight plays mm. in the second half for 172 yards in the second half uh, against the Browns. And it wasn't Cordero Patterson. It was Caleb Huntley. And it was... Avery Williams, and it was this guy, Tyler Algier, who's a fifth round pick out of BYU, who played linebacker in college also. Like these offensive coaches, Dable and Smith, of course, they want to put on, uh, you know, the tape of like, look how pretty I can do this and design it. But I also think it's like, we've got a scratch to get by with what we've got. And in these quarterbacks with Daniel Jones and Marcus Mariota, this might be the best way to win games. Mm -hmm. 